it's my moment And failure is not an option to be in, don't condone it Cause I'm on it, it's my moment, I be on it My name is Miss Kristen Dion, and this is Before the Hype TV. And I have the pleasure of speaking with Mr. Russell Stewart today, financial coach. Definitely. All right, it's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. And thank you for being here. Mr. Stewart, tell me, what do you do as a financial coach? Um, I actually have the luxury of um, traveling, mm -hmm. actually educating and empowering others on their finances. After you get people excited about the information, I actually can sit down and help them financially. Okay, are you licensed? I'm licensed, yes, okay. in four states. In four states, mm -hmm. okay. A seminar of yours, how does that typically go? Um, do you just motivate them to become financially independent? or? Tell well, us I usually that. have two parts of the seminars. Mm -hmm. um, the first part, first half of it would consist of credit budgeting. The second half, it consists of just strictly investing because that is the piece that people really miss out on. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, I typically do that one on its own because the fear of investing is because of the lack of knowledge. So I try to pour in a lot of knowledge towards that. So do you consider yourself to be an educator? I actually was an educator, so I, oh, now really? I, I educate people about finance. Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. Lou Golf Native is back in the Midlands this weekend for a three-day event aimed at helping you get your finances in order. He's the, he's the co-founder of Harvey and Stewart Capital based out of Columbia. He's also a graduate of Claflin University. Russell Stewart. Russell, thank you so much for being here this morning, thank man. Thank you for having me. I re we really do appreciate it. You know, we're going to get straight to it. You're going to be a busy guy this weekend. Definitely, definitely. Quite a number of events is taking place. First question for you, Russell. You're holding what you call a three-day event that's mm -hmm. aimed at helping folks build their network mm -hmm. and grow their net worth. Correct. Yeah. Well, tell us about your background. Um, what got you into the financial industry? Well, like I said, I did whatever the American dream consists of. I went to school, got a good education, graduated with high hopes, got a, a great job, and mm -hmm. I started looking at my paycheck, and you know, it's gross pay. And most of the time you see gross, gross means nasty, and that's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> then you have taxes, and then, I, so I had a little bit of money, but I didn't know what to do with it, and no one around me knew what to do with it. So I actually sat down with, who's now my mentor, mm -hmm. and uh, he helped me with my finances, and introduced me to the opportunity to go into financial services with him. So okay. that's basically how I got started, because if I didn't know, I figured I better know for everyone. Right. Wow, that was a great opportunity and outlook. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Very fortunate. So, and you say you were an educator before? Yeah, I actually taught um, students with mild disabilities mm -hmm. um, at a local middle high school in South Carolina, Orangeburg. Okay. Um, did that for a while, then I transferred to Baltimore to work mm -hmm. for the federal government. Oh, wow. Um, I won't say what agency that I worked for, but um, yeah, I started working with them. And, okay. Um, about three years ago, I transferred into the financial field. Okay, and so what um, sparked that change? Um, um, well, two things. I know working for someone, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're paid based upon the position and, and not the performance. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to start getting into a field where I'll be paid what I was worth and that I can ensure and have control of my income. Okay. Um, so that's what transferred me into that field. And also mm -hmm. I love helping people and the job that I had I sat in a cubicle all day, mm -hmm. so I wanted to be out and about meeting new people and uh, making a difference, okay. having something meaningful to, to, and be proud of at the end of the day. And you mentioned that um, when you first started out, you didn't have anyone to talk to about investing or where to go financially. Not at all. Not at all. Um, well, I had a close friend of mine who mm -hmm. uh, we started trading stock together and we were making oh, cool. a little bit of money and then everyone started saying, hey, hey, I see you making money, can you help me invest? But I was like, nah, because I don't have no liability or mm -hmm. no sure way to, to, to uh, give you a fair shot because stock market is a strategic gamble in a, right. in a sense. Right. So being licensed, um, learning from that experience mm -hmm. allowed me to draw the interest as well. So do you share a lot of this information with family and friends? Like, Do you have them all on board and understanding? I share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. I share it with everyone. Um, I started out with family and friends mm -hmm. and then venture out just talking to people in general. And 
once you find out where people want to go and where their dreams in life, you can kind of tell them what it takes financially to make it happen. Yeah, I'm feeling real aggressive, like I'm on testosterone, y'all suckers don't want to test it. This beat is so hard and it's about to be me, and y'all about to catch a predator, I'm about to be arrested. Yeah, but I don't care though. I know I'm such an effing weirdo. How I spit it pretty, get respected in my city, then suddenly you in front of me, I'm yelling, come and get me with a screw face and some tight jeans or a mini. My delivery is raw, but the smile is so pretty. And I hug all my support, it's the new one to rock with me. But I mean on the mic, if my attitude is yeah. Who says fresh out of college, mm -hmm. their next endeavor is to start their own business. Um, they may not have a lot of assets or um, inheritance or anything to work with. I would tell them whatever business that they want to get in, work for someone so they can get that paid for experience per se and then okay. branch away. Okay. Um, for college students now, this is my biggest bill is if you're financing to go to school, you no longer can go to school for what you want to be. You got to go for what's in demand. Right. And on the side, you can minor in what you want to be on the side because 27% of people work in their field of study. Mm -hmm. So if you have a minor in what you want to do and then a job that's in demand, mm -hmm. then you have two outlets that you could actually um, have a, a higher chance of attaining. Okay. And most people who have a good job or, or working in the field that they don't like, um, they get paid good money. So if you want to get paid good money and hate your job, why not go for what's in demand? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Be successful, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So do you talk to like a lot of younger and smaller groups as well? I do. I try to do high school mm -hmm. to in, in up, high school and up. Okay. Um, that's more the, the, the piece that's, that's, that's very important right now because you have the college route and you have mm -hmm. the real world route. Right, right. So just preparing them for what life has to offer on both ends. That's kind of um, where I try to drill. And I think money needs to be invested back on that end of things mm -hmm. to make things uh, in the future better. Right. You know, you, you think um, saving a lot of money and having it towards the end and just, you know, having a good time. Now, 95% of people fail financially because mm -hmm. of lack of education. So we need to put it in the education system. So I try to invest a portion of my time Mm -hmm. um, as more of a give back type thing because um, you really cannot, you have to do it out of goodness of your heart with the kids because they're not working yet. Right, right, right. right. Definitely. And so based on your experience and uh, what you have gone through, mm -hmm. um, you say you came out of college and, you know, did the thing like everybody tells you, go to, go to get your great education right. and get that good job and mm -hmm. live. Um, what is your outlook on that? Do you support going to school? Do you think that that's the only path? Um, either trade or degree. Mm -hmm. uh, those two paths. Um, and also start a business on your own, something small mm -hmm. that you may be passionate in because um, to build that self-confidence. Everyone should get a little small taste of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. because as people, we're very self-conscious and we don't want to take any risks. Uh, on to the next one, epitome of perfection. Most of y'all won't make it. It's the natural selection. Said you do it for the love, it's nothing showing no affection. But me, when I spit it, you know that I really mean it. Make the hair stand up on your chest because you believe it. I'm bigger than what you're seeing. Greater than my appearance. My spirit is up ahead of me. Running the interference with my speech. Now, do you have any children? I do. I have a son five-year-old son okay and what would you tell him um, he's only five so only he has five. a while before college comes definitely um, one thing that I want to do with him is uh, teach him entrepreneurship mm -hmm. at an early age a lot of people think that entrepreneurship is is more of a, a most entrepreneurs are wealthy but mm -hmm. they're really good leaders and I want to teach him to be a leader mm -hmm. not to manage people because we have managers in different professions that manage people no you need right. to lead people right so that's one of the key things that I want to teach him how to be a leader and how to show other people how to get what it is that they want and need how are you setting up for his future what are you doing to plan for your son's future well number one you have to have an education fund mm -hmm. um, and another thing that you know uh, it's important is life insurance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know whether I'll be here tomorrow right. or 30 days from now, but if something happens to me, I want to make sure he still has that same quality of life. So leveraging through, you know, different assets 
and teaching mm-hmm. along the way. He see, I mean, kids are smarter now, mm-hmm. so they see how you live. The, the, the do as I say, not as you, as I do, right. days are over. Right. So they're doing what you're doing. So leading and being an example for him, that's what I've been doing to kind of okay. sure for his future. And so you do feel that you should get them while they're young at that small age. He's five, and so mm-hmm. you're still trying to lead him on a specific path. Definitely. Um, like Frederick Douglass says, it's easy to train a child and to repair a broken man. So if you're talking about a, a, a man that's been through the ringers for 25 years, mm-hmm. it's harder than a child's mind is, can expand so much. You can never underestimate the 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 the. the, the the amount of intake that a child's mm-hmm. mind can take, so um, can learn their willingness mm-hmm. to learn. They're fearless. What's right. a common misconception that you've had about people mm-hmm. that you notice when you deal with people with money? Because you know you deal with folks on a daily basis with uh-huh. their their income. What's a mis- common misconception you notice? Two right off the back is that you got to have money to make money. Really, you just got to have the best c- uh, control of your money. Take take okay. advantage of what you have, and also that uh, that you. You, you, you need the budget. There's a saying that says, always be knowing where your money is going. Most people just have outright spending and don't know exactly where their funds are going. Fresh out of college, mm-hmm. their next endeavor is to start their own business. Um, they may not have a lot of assets or um, inheritance or anything to work with. I would tell them whatever business that they want to get in, work for someone so they can get that paid for experience per se and then okay. branch away. Okay. Um, for college students now, this is my biggest bill is, if you're financing to go to school, you no longer can go to school for what you want to be. You got to go for what's in demand. Right. And on the side, you can minor in what you want to be on the side because 27% of people work in their field of study. Mm-hmm. So if you have a minor in what you want to do and then a job that's in demand, mm-hmm. then you have two outlets that you could actually um, have a, a higher chance of attaining. Okay. And most people who have a good job or, or working in the field that they don't like, um, they get paid good money, so if you want to get paid good money and hate your job, why not go for what's in demand? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Be successful, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So do you talk to, like, a lot of younger and smaller groups as well? I do. I try to do high school mm-hmm. to in, in up, high school and up. Okay. Um, that's more the, the, the piece that's, that's, that's very important right now because you have – the college route and you have mm-hmm. the real world wa- route. Right, right. So just preparing them for what life has to offer on both ends, that's kind of um, where I try to drill. And I think money needs to be invested back on that end of things mm-hmm. to make things uh, in the future better. Right. You know, you, you think um, saving a lot of money and having it towards the end and just, you know, having a good time. Now, 95% of people fail financially because of lack of education. So we need to put it in the education system. So I try to invest a portion of my time Mm -hmm. um, as more of a give back type thing because um, you really cannot, you have to do it out of the goodness of your heart with the kids because they're not working yet. The information we're talking about today, I have your book here, speaking of books, (laughs) um, The 30 Day Difference. Right. Tell us more about your book. The 30 Day Difference, Make It a Habit and Make It Habit, and Make It Happen is Mm -hmm. an action exercise book that allows the reader to think positive take action and build self-confidence. Most goals are not achieved because most people don't think positive. Mm -hmm. And most actions are not taken because people don't think positive. Mm -hmm. And most goals are not achieved because people don't take action and people don't take action because they lack self-confidence. Okay. So in order to achieve the goal in the book, I teach people, um, number one, how to form a habit and how to get rid of an old habit, how to set an effective goal, how to measure them, and also how to think positive, take action and build self-confidence along the way. Okay. And tell us more. You're telling us how to do those things, the 30-day difference. Okay. How did this 30-day difference impact your life? Oh, man. It's, it's still impacting my life. When I want to get something done, mm-hmm. um, I minimize my distractions for 30 days, and I just go at it relentlessly, and mm-hmm. I keep track of my progress, and I do something every day towards achieving that goal. Mm-hmm. At the end of the 30 days, if I didn't achieve my goal, then I'm just as close to it as I ever been in my whole life. Mm-hmm. And on day 31, you think you want to quit, but because you did it for 30 days, it became a habit. So now you won't stop until you achieve that goal. So that's why it's called a 30 day difference. Because if you do something for 30 days, you will make it a habit. Right, very true. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true, now that you said that, yeah, <laughs> very true. Okay, so what would you tell, um, obviously probably won't be too many um, high schoolers reading this book, which they probably should. They probably um, should. What would, 
they do to achieve certain like short-term goals to kind of get them prepared for real life goals I'll give you a perfect example of, of, of the 30 day difference uh, for a college student mm -hmm. of the entering college student high school student mm -hmm. um, let's say you want to get accepted to some schools and you don't think you have the time to put in preparing yourself for, for school so set a goal of applying for 30 colleges in 30 day one a day for 30 days okay um, sending out uh, letters or reaching out to admissions personnel to see, check on your application process mm -hmm. um, once a day for 30 days and at the end of that 30 days I can almost guarantee you that maybe day one to start coming to fruition on 31 on day 31 okay. and it tends to become a snowballing effect and before you know it so many opportunities are lined up mm -hmm. and it's the same way in business right. business people get paid on what they did not what they do correct so because you did something last week you will get paid for it this week right because you sat it three to five years away and you went after it you're a millionaire to six you know year right. six so it teaches them that um, you are not compensated a lot of times for what you do but mm -hmm. for more of what you did okay and what is your um, outlook now um, we went through another great depression, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, the worst depression really in history, or the recession. Um, how do, where do you think we stand now, and where do you think we're going with this? Everything is great now. I do believe that the next uh, quote unquote depression mm -hmm. will probably be 20 times worse. Listen. is a lot of wealth would tend to shift mm -hmm. so get your mind right get your financial mind right, right so when the wealth shifts shifts you'll be in position to inherit the wealth or build it for yourself so start right. now with the little bit that you do have because when market crashes happen that's perfect opportunity most right. people run from the market when it crashes that's the time to run to the market but if you're not educated enough you wouldn't know that right so during the housing boom in 2008 with all these foreclosures everyone a lot of people lost their house or tried to sell their house because they were losing value mm -hmm. and all the investors came through and bought them up right and now it's back booming again and millionaire after millionaires came or you see so many real estate mo uh, moguls popping up in your email now right right so it's get your financial mind right so when the next crash happened and the wealth shifts you will be in position to take advantage of the shift Right, because we can agree that it's pretty much a cycle. Right, definitely right. a cycle, it repeats itself. And so most of the people who fostered during this past cycle, mm -hmm. it was because they weren't prepared. Right. And so um, how would you say, um, what would be the best way to prepare moving forward? Um, like just, just saving an emergency reserve fund mm -hmm. or what would you do? Well, emergency is one, that's just, that just minimize uh, one risk. That's your, your life happens risk, your car breaks down, your air conditioning goes down in your right. house. Um, but at the same time, putting yourself in a position where you have a cash flow so you can take advantage of small investments at the time. Mm -hmm. Because like I say, when the market crashes, it, your stock is basically on sale like your favorite shirt in the department store. Right, <laughs> so right, you right. can get more for your money at that point. Okay. So education, is it would be my, my key point. Mm -hmm. Get educated, go to seminars, read books, you know, hang around affluent or wealthy people. Mm -hmm. um, ask questions, be curious because I mean money is not everything but you know when the rent is paid you just can't write a note and say money ain't everything <laughs> right <laughs> right good luck with that <laughs> yeah. 
Most definitely. So I, I'm a firm, I'm an advocate for self-education. Okay. Um, formal education is good and land you a good job, but mm -hmm. self-education is going to make you a fortune. You're pretty young, uh, uh, graduate of Claflin University. Right. And I know you said you're proud of uh, alumni. <laughs> of Claflin. Um, t tell us this, uh, what do you tell folks who may look at you and say, you know, you're really young, you can't really tell them how to manage their money? Well, really, I don't worry about that. The only two things that I control is my attitude and my activity. Okay. So being as an example, mm -hmm. um, by walking as an example, they can see yeah. the success walking. So uh, just walking and, and preaching, practicing what I preach, and that allows me to, to, to show people exactly what to do with their money. I, I tell I, I get hyped when I'm like, I can't wait to the next crash. Everybody's like, whoa, whoa wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. So much, yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah, have your, I tell all my friends, have your money right, because cash is going to be king mm -hmm. when it crashes. And I can't wait when everything's on sale. Cash is going to be <laughs> king when it crashes. I'm telling you, that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, and tell me now, moving okay. forward, what's next? What's next? Next is um, I'm trying to finish up so I can have out my financial book, okay. which is entitled Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness, the financial goal to achieving your American dream. Okay. So the dream that America may have for you, which is go to school, get a good job, get a nice car, get mm -hmm. a house, is very debt-driven. Yeah. It is. So in my book, I'm telling you finance principles align with your dream. Mm -hmm. And I'm also promoting entrepreneurship because everyone is young, ambitious, and have passion. So I tell you how to turn your passion into an income as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So whatever your ideal of your American dream is, this book is going to give you that template to follow so you can start living your dream. Well, I will definitely be looking out for that. <laughs> okay, tell us the name of that one more time. So Life, we'll Liberty, know. and the Pursuit of Happiness. And when will that be released? God willing. God and willing. You know what? I'm going to keep it a secret. I'm going to keep it a secret because I got a, a, a special date mm -hmm. in mind. In mind? Yeah, I got a special date in mind. Okay. Because it's 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 going to be the, the house. I really believe it's going to be the household book. Okay. For the for the average person, just for the talks about you know the college situation. Mm -hmm. it talks about if you're about to retire. It talks about if you're in the middle of your professional life. Mm -hmm. It's for everyone. A, a kid can read it. A kid can read a it. A kid, well, a upper, you know, like uh, high school, adolescent, okay. definitely, and get some insight on 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 life. Okay. It's gonna be a, 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 a it's gonna be next to the Bible. Oh, 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 wow. That's <laughs> the financial Bible. Okay, the financial Bible. The financial Bible. I want it to be in everyone's household and every hotel drawer. <laughs> okay, so tell us where we will be able to find that one that is secretively released. I will be releasing that on www.russellqstewart.com. Okay. Yeah, I already have the title and the book cover on there, but um, holding that in reserves because I want to reach the masses. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was definitely a pleasure speaking with you. I mean, I've learned so much in this one session. Wow. <laughs> it was definitely a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Thank Stewart. You, thank you. And this is Before the Hype TV. My name is Miss Kristen Dion. Mr. Russell Stewart here. It's been real.